in case. Yes. Uh, so now we have uh, Anubis Networks uh, guys, uh, Pedro and Joao, and uh, they prepare their work with uh, Ludwig Kripal. And you have the floor now. Thank you. Um, so we are we are here to present our uh, our work on uh, on how to detect botnets, um, and we do this. This 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 was a joint work, uh, mostly Pedro's work, um, and a joint work with the with the university with the new University of Lisbon, um, where I work, and also Ludwig Kripal. So. Um I'll just do the, the the introduction. I'll introduce myself and Pedro, um, and then I'll, I'll I'll give him the floor so that he can uh, explain what what he did uh, mostly. So uh, Pedro um, just finished his his uh, masters in in uh, in engineering at. <laughs> yeah. So actually, this it it wasn't last week, as as uh, as it's written there. It was two wi two weeks ago, <laughs> um, but okay. So this is mostly the outcome of his uh, master thesis. Um, uh, so he's a computer security en enthusiast, um, and and now he's working for the the R and D team for uh, at at the Nubis Networks. Um, so I'm almost finishing. My my PhD in artificial intelligence, so it's it's an unrelated field, but but um, hopefully it's it's useful in the in in in, in computer security. Um, I also work for the for the R and D team from Anubis Networks, and his professor, so his uh, coordinator was Ludwig Kripal, um, and he's he's from a, another unrelated field, uh, so he's he's originally from biochemistry. Um, and he has a, 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 a master's in, a, in applied artificial intelligence, which, which goes to show that uh, uh, this cross pollinization can can really be be interesting. So we can use different skill sets from uh, from different areas, and uh, when we apply these skill sets to to computer security in this in this case, um, we get nice results. So I'll give the floor back to Pedro. Um, Thank you, Joan. Yeah. So I will briefly talk about botnets. You already know how they work and uh, what type of evasions they have. So they are usually um, composed by one master or more nodes called C2 or C and C from command and control. Um, they have evasion techniques and they are requested by a black hat client uh, Often, very often, black hat groups implement or use an existent botnet that they implemented already, um, and they they use the infected devices uh, from that botnet to execute commands that are ordered by C2 to fulfill its objective. Uh, we will be focusing on the that zoomed sort of zoomed. Um, section in the middle between the C2 and infected devices that may have different type types of topologies. Um, and I'll talk now about the evasion techniques that I, some of them I consider to the de detection, some others are just not possible by the means I use. <coughs> so the Often, encrypted communications make it difficult to use payload data, but we can still use metadata, like H, uh, payload uh, size, payload other uh, meta info from the payload. Um, we, we watch also fast flux and double fast flux, EJs, and other means that are just creative and difficult a lot to to make uh, an effective detection. So this is a typical fast flux. This is taken from the Wikipedia. Uh, it's <laughs> you are used to it, <laughs> so I, I won't be explaining. Uh, but uh, in a small 
in a small phrase, it's just a lot of records for a <coughs> small period of time. And this is done through a low TTL value. Um, they have DJs. Uh, some of them are random based, some, some others are dictionary based. This particular one, it's a dictionary one. It's time sensitive, as you may see uh, in the code. And this one is just a creative uh, one that is implemented or was or was implemented on Neckers <coughs> that used the legitimate domain to 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 get its uh, CNC IP. So it just uh, alter the bits on the third octet and get CNC IP. So detection methods, the part that matter. Um, we divid divided this in two main uh, <coughs> types, passive and active detection. On the passive one, we, we highlight packet inspection and domain name syntax. We weren't, we weren't able to use network flows because we just can't have uh, network flows info from the, the, the data we have. Uh, for the active detection, we use domain name resolutions to detect fast flex behavior. Um, the other two methods are information correlation form other services and the graph oriented queries. On the packet uh, detection methods, we, we have this kind of info. We use it to group same pattern traffic, discarding destination source and destination information on the first one. On the second one, we use that information. We correlate IP connections by common destinations. On the on the DJs, as I I told before, we have two types: a random and dictionary based. Uh, I won't be detailing the attributes that we used here on the classifiers that we'll talk after some slides after. Uh, it will be on the paper that will be published on the botconf website, and um, so we can use that kind of attributes or ratio, consonants ratio, domain name length, and other ones. Um, the dictionary based ones are a particular case that it's really difficult to have a machine learning approach, uh, at least by the attributes that we used uh, on this work. Um, domain name resolutions, it's just record the historic information for an IP to see its IPs. In this particular example, we can see a change of the A record in the example.com domain. And the detection methods, uh, the, the, the two one that we'll talk now will be about the machine learning approach uh, to the problem. The first one is one where we try to detect random DGA's uh, domain names. In this case, we can see that some of them were just bad classified. It's an error, and we can't avoid that in machine learning, unfortunately. But uh, it's you as you can see, s most of them were detected. Uh, unfortunately, fubar.com too. Uh, <laughs> so now the the really interesting part the here i group same pattern traffic where i only see the host information atp code atp version method <coughs> size and i ha I, I also provide the the dj the result from the classifier but i don't use it to to group the traffic but here you can see this is an example it's it's fictitious it's not real but you can see that we could see this happen. Um, in this example, you can see that the, the two IPs that 
uh, connected, that two domains have the same pattern uh, if we don't look to to the connection, and and they are the same family. Uh, they maybe they just don't are the same uh, group or the same campaign, but are the same family. Uh, so we used neural networks to to do this more properly self-organizing maps. Uh, for the inc information correlation part, we used information from our sinkholes, IP reputation services, malware analysis, and uh, historic DNS information. For uh, I developed a system called DNS crawler that will give some info about, about um, domains that were in FastFlex. Um, on the graph-oriented part, we, for we, we use a time frame, uh, like 6, 12, or 24 hours, which we just make a query to discover what domain names appeared on that peri period of time, and then we correlate with information from the double time of the time window we are looking. If we were looking for six hours, we would watch for 12 hours. If we, we, if we would watch 12 hours, we would, look would be looking to 24 hours, and so on. Um, but the sky is the limit. Uh, if you have more uh, information that can be correlated with this kind of information, it will be very useful. And graph-oriented uh, approach, it's it's shown very fast r when compared to other uh, databases available. Uh, so here I try to show what kind of of clusters we get. In this case, uh, we only look to the to the IP connections, source and destination, and can't discover uh, same campaign or group clusters. On the second one below, we can find another one that happens to be the same family, but we aren't unable to correlate this or to discover this. So we used the neural network to uh, group all this information together. Here you can see that uh, even not uh, intersecting by connection, we can group same types of malware by pattern. Um, so we find uh, the family cluster. So let's wrap up everything. Uh, for the DGA um, domain classification, we, we use the sport vector machine. For uh, CNC detection, we use DNS information. For and so the fla fast flux and double fast flux. For DJ rotations and last, and last hour alerts, we use the graph DB queries. Um, we group similar traffic with self-organizing map, more properly a neural network. And if we want to get same botnet traffic, we only correlate information from common destinations. If we want the same botnet family traffic, we correlate IP connections by machine learning clus clustering process. Um, we also can do direct classification by uh, malware analysis and IP reputation. It's an interesting indicator too. So demo time. So this is a, an example of the classification process. I must thank Daniel from the D DJ archive because it was very val valuable. I will use a domain name from CryptoLocker, a domain from today, to do this. I get this. <laughs> so it classified uh, one for four uh, types of DGAs. But for example, if I put there .conf.eu, 
I won't <laughs> find anything. Or other things like google.com, your company name, Microsoft. What do you want <laughs> that I put here? Microsoft, awesome. <laughs> Actually, it's a push too. <laughs> okay, this could happen. This ha this have uh, an error rate. It's not perfect. But it's, mi it's micro Microsoft. Yes, yes, I noticed. I noticed. But but it can happen that uh, I give a valid domain name like uh, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, what conf? Something, something, dot com. Okay. It's not perfect, <laughs> but <laughs> it's an in it's an interesting indicator. Um, so now this was the classifier part. The 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 other part, the group part. I have here already uh, form cluster where I only grouped things that are in the same cluster and this was grouped through the, the, the neural network algorithm. I grouped the same traffic. I, I'm not even looking to the, to the source and destination. This, wa this is all in the same <coughs> domain. This is the same domain the in the same cluster and you can see that this is the same thing you often have some other information or don't have in this case you don't have method but it's here you have a HTTP one and the other ones and the other ones don't um, let me see Next part. This is an example. Another example. I think this is Mavate. I'm not sure. <laughs> but this is an al alert from our system. That's there is something going on on that domain. And we it happens to be on three countries. They are all old IPs. We never we saw them before, so it's probably an, a rotation, and in this case, yes, it is. Uh, we have here other domains that are from the same cluster, and I would like to thank again to Daniel. <laughs> this was really useful to to prove the classification. It's work. It's uh, work like this that. Uh, happen to be happens to be really useful to to our work as researchers. Uh, so let's return this one. Let's see. Okay. So I'll conclude. We have a lot of problems. We have uh, distinct topologies, evasion techniques, humongous traffic. <coughs> bad actors creativity. Um, we have some solutions. Present versus, present versus past, real samples, the InfoSec community. Um, this all, it's useful to correlate relevant information. In the academia, we have uh, machine learning, other fields, and other kinds of, of uh, work that may be useful for, for this work. I would like to, the next slide, it's a, a funny thing that I saw yesterday here. <laughs> uh, so to whoever did this, thank you. It made me laugh. <laughs> thank you. Question. Time for questions. C'est Pedro qui a le. Enfin, John qui a le. Questions?
come on. So who does automatic classification? Ah. There's some guys here. <laughs> yeah, Peter. Okay. Uh, uh, and you have no question? Then, then question, Edouard. Hi. I also have a machine learning background, so uh, can you please tell us more about the features you use for the SVM or yeah. the kernel you use? Uh, some of the features are here. Okay, uh, here. For the classifier, we use follow ratio, consonant ratio, domain name, and all the, the features are based on the string okay. of the domain name. Uh, on the, the, the other the other the other algorithm the neural network we uh, this one we used uh, other information uh, like the number of the HTTP code uh -huh. uh, the method the size the we joined here the the domain name classifier features also we have a total of 81 features for this uh, for this algorithm and this one we have a total of 11. Okay. And um, is it a multi-class classifier that gives you the, the botnet that would use the, this DGA? Or do you have one classifier per botnet? Or how do you do that? We, we have one classifier by botnet. Okay. Thank uh, you. On the, on the, on the paper, uh, there's only one. We joined all everything and did one classifier. But now we are using separate. OK, thanks. Another question? Holly? <laughs> no, it's not Holly. <laughs> I'm just curious about your um, training set. How big is it? Uh, you were talking about the... Uh, for, for instance, for your neural network. A neural network. We, uh, we used uh, for training. We are batches of 10K. Okay. Good. Interesting. One. Oh, over there. Here. Thanks for this presentation. Uh, how did you manage to build your ground truth for uh, the training set? Two. Uh, the ground truth for your training set. Because in the demo, okay, I want to understand there is some, uh, it's not perfect, okay, there's some anomalies. But in your opinion, what what's, uh, what are the reasons? Is it it's because uh, the your ground truth, because of your learning set, or it's because uh, you are missing some features that you need to add? So the um, the idea is that uh, we we can put inside the so clustering works like a like a bag. So you throw stuff inside, you shake the bag, and then uh, the little stones <laughs> get together, right? So our, our idea, uh, in order to to validate the clusters and to 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 see if they are proper um, if they are properly cor correlated is to throw in some uh, some domains that we know um, uh, belong to some to some malware family so for instance if we if we go to virus total uh, there's a list of, uh, of of domains associated with some malware family we take some samples uh, we throw them inside the, the, the bag together with with other domains that we know nothing about we shake the bag and we <laughs> and we get the okay. Yeah, but but, but it, it's it's very difficult to to obviously it's very difficult to um, to know if we are making the proper um, groups. Uh, he, he used some some um, some metrics, um, but they they only they say things that are uh, inherent to the cluster itself. So some. Some indexes, some some silhouette index, and some some, some metrics that are not, um, they, they they are only indicators of, uh, of the, the 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 clustering process itself, uh, but they don't say anything about the how good the clusters are. Okay. Last question. 
Ok, thank you. Thank you. Ok, so um, a few comments before we leave for lunch. Um, so, first one. Uh, this presentation was a short talk. Uh, it was typically uh, I exactly what we expected from short talks. He's a, a young researcher presenting his job and it's exactly what we uh, wanted to have here. Uh, before there was a presentation from Google. Google is one of the sponsors, of course, but they went through the whole process of the with the program committee and everything, so they were selected and not uh, just appointed because there's a there are sponsors. It same goes for David, who's uh, from uh, Trend Micro tomorrow, and th they had to give their their papers in time and everything. So uh, it's not just because they're they're uh, nice sponsors. It's it, it's because it was an interesting talk to look at. So that's for the program. Um, last comment. I'd like to see Paul Jung f uh, before well before lunch, if possible. And I, I wish you a, a, a good lunch and see you back in one hour, okay? <laughs>